All right, hey, Practice Indy. Uh, happy week of Christmas for those that celebrate that. Happy winter solstice. I uh, wanted to just share a little bit about this week's focus since we're gonna be quiet on social media and I know some people <clears throat> get their information about what we're focusing on from there and give just some considerations as we close out the year. So this week's focus is Upadana and we've been progressively building to this all month. Um, if you haven't noticed, most months do have an arc or have a story that we're trying to tell and, um, and assemble everything around. So this month we started with our patterns, or our habits. Um, I might get this a little bit of, out of order, but we talked about some skaras, which are our habits. We talked about ahamkara, the ego self. So in order to become aware of our habits, we first have to become aware of ourselves and our misidentification with self, which is really what ahamkara um, means. Then we start to expose those patterns that we've associated with who we are. I'm a morning person, so I do these things. And uh, then last week we discussed viveka, which is discernment. So once we are aware of the self, the misidentification of self, and then um, the habits and patterns that instill or continue to um, reinforce that self, then we can arrive at viveka discernment of truth versus untruth or truth versus near enemies of the truth, things that look like they are um, assisting us on our path to expansion, growth, or self-awareness, self-acceptance, um, but really maybe are derailing us. So this final week, with it being the winter solstice, with it being the week before we traditionally in our country and many other countries around the world set resolutions or goals, is Upadana. So Upadana is um, you typically see it in two different places. One is the Sanskrit Pali, um, and it means fuel, uh, like fuel to a fire, fuel to a flame, um, or keep make, keeping a process active. Uh, and the more popular way that we see it is from the Buddhist lens, which there are four upadanas within Buddhism, within the structure of Buddhism and getting towards um, the relinquished self or um, nirvana or whatever terms we're, we're putting that in. So upadana from the fuel perspective really helps, I think, articulate the Buddhist perspective. So I'm going to start there. Um, and again, I'm not a scholar of any of these things. I'm just an ardent student. So all of this is just an invitation for you to find and seek teachers. If, if these topics resonate with you, find and seek teachers who maybe know more about this or help you embody this. These are all just invitations, which is what we're calling 2021 as our theme is the invitation. So just a dis disclaimer, I'm not a Buddhist. I'm not a professor of um, Eastern religions, you know, so this is just my hot take, my limited awareness. Uh, but from my limited awareness, Buddhism articulates these four upadanas and they are essentially grasping and clinging that ultimately lead to suffering. So um, there's the self, the clinging and sort of the misidentification once again with the grasping and clinging to the self as permanent, thinking that we are here forever. So that is going to automatically result in suffering because we're not here forever and we change every second. Uh, the next is um, opinions and views. And, you know, we cling on to so, so many opinions and views. And this is one that I think science teaches us well is to constantly be um, analyzing and considering, you know, what's next. Like this is partially the truth, but what's next? So when we cling and think that our opinion and our view is fixed um, without letting ourselves expand into more possibilities or more options, uh, we ultimately will lead to suffering there. Um, rises in rituals. So from our opinions and views, we start to craft um, rituals around them and we become very fixed in those. And so while I'm a big fan of rituals, this time of year is you know, punctuated with rituals, identifying with the rituals. For example, if you're struggling with how maybe your holidays are looking differently, that's an example of this clinging to the way it's supposed to be, how we always do it, instead of accepting that uh, perhaps this, this year is going to look different. So um, recognizing our suffering and the clinging to our, our rituals as we believe they should always be. 
And then sense objects, um, clinging to rituals leads to clinging to things, to um, talisman, to our material living. And all of these things ultimately lead into suffering because going back to Viveka, many of them lead us to either near enemies of the truth or, um, or just completely non-truths. So they're distractions and from the, the whole self, the pure self. And I would argue that sometimes they can be vessels too. But if we, if we attach 100% to them and think um, that's the only way that this self is permanent and it's the only thing, it's always going to lead to suffering. So moving over to the Pali Sanskrit definition of this or the uh, translation of fuel, if you think about it, if whatever you put your energy into, right, is going to fuel that fire, is going to add timber to the fire to then increase the fire um, of suffering, if you will. So makes a lot of sense how those can be linked. And what we want you to consider in this final week of December moving into January is what can you let go of? If Upadana is clinging, if Upadana is the fuel to the flame, this is a time where the flame burns out. We're at the shortest day of the year right now, the least amount of sunlight, least, I guess in this, hem is that true for, it's not true everywhere. It's just in this hemisphere. Um, Sorry, this is giving me, this is giving me a lot of anxiety. Uh, clinging, unnecessary clinging. The hair, not me, I'm not clinging to it. The hair is clinging to the wrong side of my part. Anyway, um, so when we think about this time of year, you know, it's a time to rest. It's a time to put things to bed. It's a time for us to Marie Kondo a bit, our attachment to self, our um, opinions and views, rituals, sense objects. So I'm not saying like throw out the baby with the bathwater um, and just start all over, but I am having myself consider and would offer to you to consider there are a lot of things that didn't happen the way we thought they were going to happen in 2020. And that's what it is. So what of those fuels your purpose? Like maybe you, you do cling to something because Putting it in the fire of your dharma and your purpose helps you keep going forward. A lot of a lot of the conversations that have been brought to the forefront of the American mind around race and inequality, those probably shouldn't be put aside quite yet. We've got we've got stuff to resolve, right? So maybe that's something that you put into the fire of your expansion and your growth. But what are other things? Um, again, you know, this clinging to what the holidays should be. Well, ultimately that's probably going to create more suffering than less. Um, maybe that's something you can put to bed. And it doesn't mean that next year you couldn't return to those rituals or um, that you can't make new ones this year. So I, I just wanted to take this time as a community with this lesson to really look at what do we, what do we need to bury? What do we need to put away? So with that, December 30th, we're gonna be doing something a little different from our normal goal setting this year. We're going to have a, sort of a burial service for 2020, a recap of our 2020. Um, and in that, just like a good burial service, we're going to put in, lay to rest those things that are no longer necessary, that we are ready to surrender and give up and yield to somebody else to take that energy and use. But also, if you think at a funeral, a really good funeral, there's the, there's the reminders of the essence of the person or the essence of the thing that you want to keep going, right? So there are things about this year that maybe we're not ready to let go of. Um, I, for one, have really gotten some good sleep this year, <laughs> like taken my sleep very seriously. And, you know, that's something I, I am clinging to. I'm still going to cling to that because that has really had a lot of benefit for me in this in this moment in my life and I've learned to rest I've learned to pause those are things I want to carry into 2021 some of the resentment I have around um, other things and clinging to sense objects those are things I'm ready to um, leave in this year so if you decide to join us for the goal setting we are going to ask everybody bring um, a cardboard 
box, like a shoe box or something. We're gonna write out things that we're ready to really bury and let go of. We're gonna put them in the shoe box and we're gonna bury them. Not together, that's gonna to be on you. I'm not going in your backyards, but um, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. So in this last week, be in that conversation with yourself. What am I gonna use as fuel? What am I, upadana, what am I gonna put into the fire to keep that purpose driving forward? And what am I ready to bury? What am I ready to let go of and not cling or grasp to anymore? So I hope this gets your wheels turning and I hope you will make it to class, whether it's in person, mask up six feet apart or virtually. And I'm um, just wishing you all a very healthy and happy holiday season.